Hey guys, welcome back to the Another Excuse podcast, where we usually chat to founders, creators, and self-starters about how they started and where they are now. But today's episode is going to be slightly different because it's a celebratory episode. I am celebrating reaching my 21st episode. When starting my podcast, my first goal was always to reach 21 episodes, and we did it. I consecutively posted 21 episodes, one a week, for 21 weeks. You may be wondering why 21 episodes is a goal. It seems like such an arbitrary number, but it's based on statistics. So 90% of podcasts don't make it past three episodes, and 90% of those podcasts don't make it past 20 episodes. So with a bit of maths, if you hit 21 episodes, you automatically make it into the top 1% of all podcasts. So you can see why I chose this goal. It was all up to me to remain consistent. I didn't have to rely on anything else. Um, I didn't have to rely on any other metrics and outside forces to get me into the top 1% of podcasts. All I had to do was post 21 episodes in a row. And now we're here. And so I thought I'd celebrate reaching this landmark by reflecting on everything I've learned over the last five months. I'll go over the positives, the struggles, the things I'd do differently. And at the end, I'll just sum up everything I've learned. So this is a slightly different episode. It's my first solo episode and it's completely new to me. So I thought there's no better time to try it than on my 21st episode. So here goes. It makes me cringe a bit speaking on my own. Uh, a bit of imposter syndrome is creeping in. And I just think to myself, who would want to listen to me chat for 15, 20, 30 minutes? I don't really know how long this is going to take. But anyway, I'm overcoming that fear of imposter syndrome and going to deliver my solo episode. So if this sounds like it could be of any interest to you, then enjoy the rest of the show. Right, so I thought I'd start with the positives. And there are so many positives that have come from me just starting this podcast. It's been an unbelievable journey. Uh, I'm speaking like it's been ages. It's only been five months, but I feel like I've made a huge amount of progress in quite a short amount of time. What's really nice about the whole process is that I get to watch myself back weekly iterate on the things I feel like I'm not doing too well and improve and I can look back and see how far I've come which is also really cool. I've also met so many great people, so many interesting successful people and having those conversations are also so valuable and it's it's kind of a hack having a podcast. I get to use it as an excuse to chat to some really interesting people and also some of my friends who have achieved great things. I mean, you don't really get the opportunity to sit your friend down and be like, okay, why did you do this? How did this work? What was your thought process behind this? And what were your shortcomings? And what were your successes? Like when you're at a drink with a big group of people, you may ask one or two questions, but you get sidetracked, someone interrupts, someone joins the conversation. And so having a devoted hour to actually just understand the thought processes behind everything with your friends and uh, and other successful people is just so valuable and I've gained so much from it. I've also learned how to produce my podcast or any podcast for that matter. I know now how to host a podcast through an RSS feed on a website. I know how to do show notes and how to edit sound. Um, so just the whole process of posting weekly creating my short videos, that whole process has now helped me gain a skill that I previously never had. Another positive is I've stayed consistent, which not only helps the growth of the podcast, but it also helps with my self-identity. I now feel like I see myself as someone who shows up more, who follows through with what they're going to say, and stays consistent and will keep delivering. It may seem insignificant to some, but I feel like this was really important for me just 
the way I view myself. And so I'm really, really pleased and proud of myself for sticking to it for 21 weeks. And I don't plan to stop anytime soon. And like I said, when I started, I was about four or five episodes in and I realized that my goal needs to shift from this 21 to 52. So that's a full year of podcasting. And then I can reassess the situation and see where we go from there. But the next number is 52. And so maybe I'll do an episode similar to this when I reach that number. I touched on it a bit, but I feel like I've grown a lot. Reiterating the fact that watching yourself over over and over again, week in, week out, and cringing at your mistakes and how horrible you were to begin with helps you grow a lot quicker. I'm amazed at how infrequently I say um. I used to say it a lot at the beginning. I used to cringe hearing myself say awesome as a response to almost every answer. It's it's been, It's been amazing and really helpful and I feel like I need to apply this process to other aspects of my life. It's just so evident that if you watch yourself back and like sportsmen do where they review the game tapes and you see where you're messing up and you can improve so much faster than just having it all in your head and making assumptions. Anyway, that those are the positives I've drawn from this experience. Now we'll move on to the, the struggles. So the things I've struggled with the most are being my own guest booker. It's quite tough um, working a full-time job and also trying to manage booking some guests where some would want to jump on a call. I also prep all the questions beforehand and there's quite a bit of back and forth and calendars with different email addresses and stuff. So it's a bit all over the place and I am trying to streamline my processes and I wish they were more streamlined to begin with. But I guess that's part of the journey and part of learning. Um, And so That has been one struggle, is just booking guests consistently and systematically. Another one is my time management. Because I've made a promise to myself to remain consistent, I sometimes have things on the weekend or leave the editing too late and it makes my Sundays horrible. It becomes a very full Sunday and I'm editing nonstop. Although my speed of editing has improved, which has saved me time, um, the first few months were were tough. Another struggle of mine is that this is quite a lonely journey. Although I do get to have conversations with people, uh, I am alone a lot of the time. Sharing in great outcomes and celebrating things like this, I'm sitting in a room with a camera on my own right now. So it is quite lonely um, and it is something... I've been thinking about, and now that I'm saying it out loud, I think it is important for me to maybe find some community around podcasting. I think that could be beneficial. It's a shared experience. We have something in common. And so this is a kick up my own ass. Now that I'm saying it out loud and realizing it, I need to find some community around podcasting. I think that will be very helpful. Another struggle was remaining consistent. I touched on pieces that basically contributed to the consistency. All bits play a part, but because I put so much on my plate to remain consistent, it's it can be a lot. But because it is a lot and I was able to stick to it, it's just that much sweeter. The last struggle that was the whole point of starting this podcast is just starting. I actually put off the idea for almost too long. And by almost too long, I mean that this almost became an idea that fizzled out. I'm not sure if anyone else has had that experience, but I've had quite a few ideas where I felt really strongly about them, but they just stayed in the back of my mind for too long until they were there no more. And they just became an afterthought. And so I'm really happy I jumped on this because there's quite a meta message in like me starting and talking to people who have started. And I just, I actually wish I'd started sooner. Right, so we move on to the things I'd do differently. The things I'd do differently are, like I said, I'd start sooner. The Just the personal benefits alone, like my growth, improvement in my speaking, which is one of the reasons why I started it, uh, the people I've met, those benefits are more than enough than a hugely successful popular podcast that's listened to by, listened to by thousands and gets sponsorships. I feel like that's a cherry on the top. And if that never comes, I'm more than happy with what's happening right now. 
if I'm able to speak to the kinds of people that I have been speaking to and just continue going for another 31 episodes, I will have grown so much. I would have learned so much from so many interesting people that that's more than enough to get out of this experience. I would also, like I touched on, have a better booking system. I'm working on, I'm testing out a few CRMs and sorting that out so it's all in one place and I can get back a bit of my sanity. And another one that I do differently is not overthink things because you'd learn and iterate like from episode to episode, you learn so quickly. And I've learned that rather getting it out and holding yourself to the deadline of that consistency and just delivering episode after episode and realizing, oh, I could have done that better or next episode, I'm definitely not putting it out with that mistake. Those type of things, you never make that mistake again because you want it to be better. You're paying attention to it. You're sitting down, listening to the whole episode. Yeah, it's just don't overthink, rather get it out, stay consistent, and you will improve over time. I mean, I look back at the first episode and I cringe. And I can only imagine once I reach episode 52, how much I'll be cringing at even this episode. So it's part of the process. It's just going to be cringing at myself for a very long time. I've also realized that something I want to do differently is I want to incorporate more in-person episodes. I don't want to become reliant on them, but I feel like the human connection and less lag might help the conversation flow and might lead to completely different types of conversations. I need to get a second mic. And once I do that, I, I want to sit down with some interesting people that live near me or visit from time to time and have really in-depth conversations because I feel like when you're reading someone's body language and you're more vulnerable, you can have a very different type of interesting conversation. That's not to say the conversations I've had so far haven't been interesting. It's just, you know what I mean. Um, In person, I think, could add a different dynamic to the whole experience and even my learning experience. So to sum it all up, let's talk about learnings. Although all of these reflections are learnings too, I thought I just sum it up. It's easy to look back and it's all over the place, but I want to sort of focus it down to the main things that I've learned from this process. And then it could also help me focus on things that I need to improve on going forward. The first and main one that I can't reiterate enough is just start. That is the main message of my podcast and newsletter. It's just about starting and taking that leap. And it's something that I need to remind myself every single day. Every idea that creeps into my head, I either come up with excuses of why it won't work without testing that it will work, or I lose confidence, the idea fizzles out, like I mentioned. There's so many factors where like just starting and trying the thing could be so beneficial to you and you never know the outcomes until you actually try. Although I've started this podcast, and may seem like I'm someone who does that. I'm not, and I still need to remind myself and still need to keep doing it. It's a muscle that you need to flex constantly. And yeah, I just need to remind myself that. So this is a message more to me than anyone listening. Another one is lower the barriers to starting as much as you can. The barriers to entry and the barriers to consistency. And what do I mean by that? I mean, right now I've got my light set up and my camera behind my computer and my microphone attached to my desk and they all just stay there the whole time. I swing the mic out so I can work at my desk, but everything else pretty much just stays in place. And when I have an episode, um, if that's during my lunch break or right after work in the evenings, I can swing this around, turn on a light, boom, and I'm ready to go. So there's not much resistance. It doesn't seem like a chore and it's just easy to start. And the same goes for the software I use. I use Riverside, which is a, it's kind of like, zoom or google meets but it records 
the footage natively on whoever's in the conversation's computer. So the sound and video is recorded on each of your computers and then it's sent to me. So if you have a good camera on your end or our Wi-Fi signal on either side drops a bit, that doesn't really matter. The footage will be perfect. The sound will be perfect, which is so helpful and just reduces so many headaches. It also has like a script function where you can have words and your questions like above your videos. So while you're chatting, you can just have a peek at that. And they also have great, like Riverside has great resources on YouTube, which is where I learned a lot about like my sound editing and hosting a podcast through RSS feed and so many other useful things so it's like lowering the barrier and just finding like good resources to get started and it's resources about getting started and not just about podcasting in general where you do that thing that i like to call mental masturbation where you feel like you're making progress because you're watching a youtube video but you're not actually making any progress just lower the barrier make it as easy as possible to start and keep going that's a huge thing for me and i don't know if I would have remained consistent, if I had to set up this light and my camera each time. So I'm really, really grateful and lucky to be able to leave my equipment in a position where it doesn't take much to just turn on and go. Another learning is to use your network. I've got so many basically referrals from previous guests, um, just people I know recommending others and just asking. I've been so surprised firstly at how many people I know have come across the podcast and listened to it and they've all said really kind things but they've also recommended other people they want to be helpful and I think staying consistent is part of that signaling if you signal that you're actually giving this a go and you're going to stay consistent then people realize that you're serious about it and then they're willing to help so that's been really beneficial, just leveraging my network. Another lesson that I did touch on is just be okay with sucking. I know it's really hard and a lot of people do identify as perfectionists, but I think it's a really valuable lesson to learn to just suck and cringe while you watch yourself and just know that you will get better. And the cringing is so much of a motivator that you just won't suck as much the next time because you can't stand to watch yourself through for an hour and watching watch yourself say the same responses to answers from guests so many so many little things and even like your body language and how you come across and saying um a million times i actually edited out the ums at my first few episodes because i was saying them so much and that took me hours longer to edit episodes there's just so much to gain from an experience like this and I would recommend it to anyone. I know there's those memes and viral videos of like another white boy with a podcast and I suppose that is true but if your intentions aren't to blow up and take advantage of podcasts growing but rather just get better at speaking, get better at asking people to come on your podcast and getting better at asking interesting questions and teasing interesting stories out of people and just learning more about yourself i think there's so much that anyone can gain from being on a podcast it is also pre-recorded so there's a lot of room to screw up make mistakes you can be more vulnerable with people and you don't need to use that in the recording it's not make or break and there's a lot of freedom and safety and at and growth at the same time so i couldn't recommend it enough i've loved every second of it it does take up a lot of my time but it feels like i've got so much out of it that i want to keep going and keep learning from some amazing people so if you have listened to me ramble for these 20 odd minutes Firstly, I'm very surprised that you made it to the end and thank you so much for listening and thank you for the support. If you've listened to my previous episodes, I really appreciate it. I, I can't believe the growth that this podcast has had. I can't believe how it's resonated with people and I'm just 
really amazed by everything that's come from it. And so I really appreciate everyone who's listening and thank you so much. And here's to another 31 more so we can reach that golden number 52, one year of podcast of one year of podcast episodes. So yeah, thanks again. I hope this was helpful to anyone considering it and wanting to take that leap, but was a bit nervous. Just do it. I will be your first guest and we can go through it together. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to send me an email or check out my newsletter. And thanks again. And I'll see you in the next episode.